Let's talk about some of the unicellular organisms. Now, how are these unicellular organisms different from multicellular organisms? First of all, unicellular organisms have just one cell and that single cell performs all the life activities. So let's talk about, let's say, a human body. We have different cells that perform different function. We have cells for the purpose of excretion, respiration, uh, circulatory uh, movements or uh, you have various cells which have specialized functions so these cells together form the tissue and then you have the organ and the organ system that is formed but in the unicellular organisms you have a single cell that performs all the life actions or all the actions required for life and therefore this unicellular organism has relatively shorter life span as compared to a multicellular organism so in this class we would be focusing on five major unicellular organisms let's move on to them one by one the first is amoeba now amoeba is as we know has an irregular shape no well-defined shape it has false legs and these false legs are known as pseudopodia pseudo means false podia means legs so these are the false legs so let's say you have a food vacuole that is seen here so these legs would expand the pseudopodia would expand and engulf that food vacuole this process is known as phagocytosis which is engulfing of the food vacuole interestingly now be very very careful in this case in amoeba we have a single nucleus that is present so you have just one nucleus that is present however in case of paramecium you have two nucleus that are present so just to be very careful i am explaining the difference here again amoeba has one nucleus paramecium has two nucleus again the cytoplasm is filled with lots and lots of small vacuoles and as we understand the most important feature in amoeba is the pseudopodia which is the false lag for movement now coming on to the next organism which is paramecium now paramecium you have an oral groove that is there now this oral groove is the place through which you have the food ingestion that takes place or engulfing of the food as you can see the food vacuoles are uh, taken through the oral groove into the uh, body of the paramecium and then you have two nucleus the macronucleus and the micronucleus that are present and you have the uh, vacuoles which are contractile vacuoles again this is a kind of slipper like structure with a lots of hair like things that are present onto the surface and these are known as cilia. Cilia are meant for movement and locomotion of a paramecium. So this was about paramecium. The next important organism that we would understand is euglena. Euglena is basically under the five kingdom classification it is classified under the protestas or the protest. Now this is neither plant nor animal. So that's the first thing to remember. The next important thing is within the Eugelina, you have at one end the nucleus that is located and on the other end you have the red eye spot that is located and this is a photoreceptor. It is sensitive to light and it helps Eugelina to move towards light. Now Eugelina basically has one flagella. Now this flagella is meant for locomotion interestingly again in paramecium locomotion is by cilia in euglena it is by the flagella so that is a major difference euglena has photoreceptors or which is also known as eye spot on one end and nucleus on the other end and across the body you have chloroplasts that are present now these chloroplasts that are present are there for producing the food so when you have the photoreceptors that are active it would move towards the light and these chloroplasts would start synthesizing the food and it would act as an autotroph in other conditions it would act as an heterotroph as well and therefore it is classified as neither plant nor animal it is both autotropic as well as heterotropic that means it can prepare its own food by the light and presence of chloroplast or it can intake another uh, smaller organisms 
it also has flagella which is whip like and helps in the movement or locomotion and euglena has vacuoles that are present the next is clemendomonas now clemendomonas is important because it basically has a cup shaped chloroplast so as you can see it is a structure of chloroplast and this is cup shaped again you have an eye spot which is photosensitive that is present so it is autotrophic it can manufacture its own food and within that cup shaped chloroplast you have the nucleus that is present another interesting feature is there are two flagella that are present and these flagella are meant for movement so that is a characteristic of clemendonas besides that we also talk about yeast yeast is important it is a kind of spherical or oval shape that has there it has a distinct cell pattern with granular cytoplasm so the cytoplasm is kind of granular in nature it's not a uh, regular cytoplasm that is seen the vacuole is very very large and you have a nucleus that is present so that is yeast so those are the five unicellular organisms and the basic features of those that we have discussed as you can see in the uh, diagram here this is a diagram for amoeba and the movement of pseudopodia as you could see the next is the di diagram for clemendomonas where you have two flagella that are seen this is euglena where you can see the movement through the flagella and this is the diagram for paramecium where you can see small cilia on the body that helps in the movement so i repeat again in euglena and clemendomonas there are flagella for movement euglena one flagella clemendomonas two flagella in paramecium you have cilia and two nucleus clemendomonas has a cup shaped chloroplast that is present amoeba has pseudopodia that is present and those are some of the unique characteristics of these multicellular organisms we would be talking about sorry unicellular organisms we would be talking about multicellular organisms in our coming classes so stay tuned for many more updates from our side have a wonderful day ahead